Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of the Talk to Terry Morning Show, where we go over tips, tricks, ideas, and exercises to help make you the absolute best entrepreneur you can be, not only for yourself, but for the people you love and care about most. Episode 267, you become better for not only you, but the people you love and care about most. You got to be a little uncomfortable and take that leap of faith. You're in control of the process. I'm here with you. If we don't continue to grow, if we don't continue to move on, we will be sad and upset. And this morning, we're actually talking about eating. We're talking about eating. One of the greatest things to ever bless us as human beings, something that gets the senses involved more than anything I can really think of. I mean, textures, I mean, you can do literally everything. You can involve every sense of that we possess with cooking, whether it's just like seeing how beautiful and amazing the food is. Maybe we're smelling the food, tasting the food. Maybe we're touching to prepare the food. It's pretty incredible. And this, and and because it gets all of these senses involved, it can be very easy to live in the present moment with this. So our goal, our objective is to slightly understand maybe a few stories, a few stories that I've heard off of other documentaries, other presentations that I really enjoyed that I thought were really good about conscious eating. There is a good story about how monks take an hour to eat a bowl of soup. Monks take an hour to eat a bowl of soup. And you're probably thinking like, oh my gosh, one hour to eat a, a whole bowl of soup? That's that's how long it takes? And I think this is more so, or my interpretation of it is this is, this is an opportunity to be very present, to engage our senses. Have you ever been an un unconscious eater? I know specifically sometimes when I've had a longer day and I finally get to eat, then I'm just scarfing it down. And then before I know it, I'm feeling really bloated. I don't even remember tasting the food or whatever it was. I mean, it's cost like $50 to go out to eat to now, go out to eat now. So, and then before I know it, I eat it and it's just already gone. So we're trying to raise some awareness to the importance of slowing down eating. What are some benefits? Maybe before we jump into the story, maybe some benefits, better digestion, there's a lot of stories and studies and research that back that just eating slowly, chewing your food better helps with digestion. It helps with nutrient absorption. It helps with weight management. I'm looking over here at my notes, some of the stuff that we got down. Enhanced nutrient absorption, weight management, and reduction of stress. It turns out that eating slowly maybe taking the Buddhist monk approach of eating a bowl of soup over a longer period of time to really get our senses involved, to be with this bowl of soup, to be grateful for it, actually reduces a lot of stress. I think one of my, my coach, he talks about thinking about the manufact the process that it took to get this food to the table. Just to clarify, this is not super... This is a really sad statistic, but a very true statistic. Three million children this year across the world under the age of 18 will starve to death. Three million people will starve to death under the age of 18 this year. And that's a recurring statistic that is unfortunately very sad, but very true that so many people don't even have the opportunity to eat. And it's crazy how you can we can forget how really valuable food is. I mean, when you think of things that you can go without, it's definitely on there. I think about how I couldn't go without Netflix, or I think about how I couldn't go without my cell phone. But think about other things like your basis, Maslow hierarchy of needs, food, hunger is towards the baseline. If you don't have that, you're not going to be thinking about your job. You're not going to be thinking about uh, looking good on Instagram or any of those other things. So it's I'm not saying we have to start our day with the doom and gloom of the seriousness of like starvation across the world versus just maybe we can use it as a stepping stone or as a powerful tool to be more grateful about what is in front of us. I know eating, my girlfriend and I do a, 
amazing dinners most nights we cook and she's been cooking more than me lately but the, just these incredible meals and we get to sit down and we get to enjoy each other's time and we get to eat and we get to slow down and this idea of a monk taking an hour to eat a bowl of soup i think has very been very helpful to add to the story that i think is really good for distractions is trying to eliminate distractions as we're eating. I think looking at your cell phone while you eat to take a break is very, very common. Looking at your cell phone while you are eating is can be a great way to take a break. I do it all the time and I'm not perfect about this. I'm sure over the next week I'm gonna grab my cell phone, I'm gonna eat and I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna watch my phone as I eat something. And that's okay. The goal is to just try and experiment with this no distraction, no cell phone, just being with the meal, eating the meal, and trying to get more out of that. So we can do things like, most importantly, reducing stress. So conscious eating, slowing down, starting with that. The second half of this show, I wanted to talk about a little bit of a story. It's about a bowl of ice cream. So the monks were given these bowls of soup. And they were to eat these bowls of soup over an hour. They needed to continue to take the time to eat this bowl of soup over an hour. And then what happened was they started bringing out to these monks, they brought out bowls of ice cream. And many monks don't get ice cream very often. That's not really part of the monastery. It's not part of the resources that they use. And a lot of them don't even eat dairy or maybe it's not dairy ice cream. Doesn't matter. Delicious, sweet ice cream that they haven't touched in a very long time. So the object is, so you can pretend ice cream is whatever object it would be, maybe your cell phone, maybe a television, maybe something else numbing or distracting. But anyway, they brought out the bowls of ice cream while they were still eating their bowl of soup. And they said, you need to continue to eat the bowl of soup mindfully while the ice cream is on the table. So they placed the ice cream onto the table. And then they're eating the, and they just started eating this bowl of soup. And they have, they have to eat this bowl of soup over the next hour. So this ice cream is going to literally melt away. This ice cream is going to melt away. And they're not going to eat it when it's absolutely at its best. And as they're eating the bowl of soup, the monks are having such a hard time. They can't stop thinking about the ice cream and how they want to be eating the ice cream and how they want to enjoy the ice cream, the texture of the ice cream. The, maybe it's strawberry or their favorite flavor or whatever it is. Their minds are so wrapped into it that they cannot enjoy the bowl of soup. And then by the time the bowl of soup is eaten, the ice cream has already melted. The point of this story is that it's so easy to get distracted by the things that we don't have that we stop enjoying the things that are in front of us. Maybe this could be a certain amount of money. Maybe this could be a type of car. Maybe this could be a relationship. Maybe your partner looking um, a certain type of handsome or sexy or beautiful. Or maybe it could be living in a different area that you don't already live. It's very easy to let life go by and to miss the blessings that are already in front of us because of the distractions or the idea that something else would be better. This is human nature to continue to evolve, to continue to have better things in front of us. So be very careful, be very cautious when it comes to the tantalizing shiny objects, the bowl of ice cream. When you already have a nutritious bowl of soup, that is going to help you get to your goals of feeling better, being healthier, being disciplined, being less stressed, and focusing on what is in front of us. If we can take these examples, if we can take these stories and metaphors, and we can apply to our lives by slowing down what it is that we eat in front of us. I think the world is speeding up in so many ways that humans are just not wired to do that. I think we're going so fast that I think the real opportunity now is actually counterintuitive to the go, go, go method, 
which I've lived my life all the way up until like a year ago. And then starting to realize like, holy crap, the whole point of this, the real beautiful parts of the human experience is when I slow down, slow down, buddy. And when I slow down, when I take longer and do I need to take a damn hour to eat a bowl of soup? No, I don't. But now I take 10 minutes instead of one minute to eat my food. I'm taking a few extra minutes. I'm, I'm get, engaging a few extra senses. We don't need to be monks to where we watch literal bowls of ice cream melt away and we can't indulge in anything ever again. But what we do need to recognize is that our human experience is enhanced when we are grateful, when we engage our senses, and when we slow down. So I'm asking for myself to continue to slow down on my and have more conscious eating instead of unconscious eating, and then not be so distracted by the thoughts, by the objects that I believe would make my life better if I had them instead of this. Focusing on what we have, being grateful of the process of what it has brought to us, I think it'd be a great stress reducer. It can be a great mindfulness tool, and it can just enhance our quality of life. Maybe over your lunch break today, whatever you brought to lunch for work, or maybe this bre the breakfast that you're eating this morning, maybe the coffee that you're being able to sip. Just by slowing down how much coffee, taking literal longer periods of time to enjoy the coffee, we make higher quality coffee, and... I take a lot longer to drink the coffee now instead of I used to just powerhouse and get two through two or three cups. And I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Let's get it done today. And the riled up anxiety only caused me to have more worries about the future, which we talked about yesterday being one of the top tiers of suffering for humans. Versus now my presence is with more the coffee as I'm slowly sipping it and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process of where the coffee beans have come from. And a lot of this, I, I get it. Sounds like woo woo stuff. It's like, oh, wow. I got to think about every little detail. It's like, why wouldn't you? Is that not super beautiful? How we're able to manufacture and process and laborers and distributors and in inventions and just the logistical side of things, the supply chain of the world that we live in today that allows us to have these beautiful indulgences in front of us right away. I think taking the time to slow down, I think the time to slow down your eating, I think the time to be able to be around distracting things like the bowl of ice cream and being able to say, no, I'm enjoying this right now. I don't need that right now. I'm enjoying this right now. Saying no to the shiny, shiny objects and focusing on the project that you promised yourself that you'd be focusing on. This could be losing weight. This could be making more money. This could be starting a career that you absolutely love and you're very passionate about. Whatever your focus is, make it the actual focus and slow down and appreciate what's around it. Because where our focus goes, like our emotions like tend to follow it. It's, an, it's absolutely incredible. And if you're willing to really narrow that focus onto the things that you really want, on the things that you deserve, on the things that you want to benefit, then we can really improve the quality of life. Thanks for checking out our content. If you want to learn more about investing in yourselves and working with me and our company personally, we offer a six week total life mastery boot camp where we go over the most important topics to make sure that our life has the foundation we need to catapult us forward to take the right and proper actions to become happier and more productive, guaranteed, or our money back.